Hi, this is Dr. Dwayne Wood from Diabetes and Endocrine Wellness Center and the Light Away in Huntsville, Alabama. Today we're going to be talking about a disease, diabetes insipidus, that results in excessive thirst and excessive urination, and it's not dealing with blood sugars. Let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about diabetes insipidus. We're going to be talking about the symptoms, what causes it, the different types, and telling you what are some of the treatments that we currently have for diabetes insipidus. But before we get there, if you are getting some benefit from our channel, if you're enjoying and learning from the videos that we're producing, if you've not already done so, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the bell so that you'll be alerted of new things that we do. Uh, give us a thumbs up and share this video with your family and with your friends. So what is diabetes insipidus? Before we talk about diabetes insipidus, we need to step back for a minute and talk a little bit about the pituitary. The pituitary is a pea-sized gland that sits behind the eyes that regulates a lot of the hormonal functions in the body. Most of the disease processes that we've probably heard of have to do with the first part of the pituitary, the anterior pituitary, because it's divided into two, an anterior and a posterior. So things like hypogonadism or low testosterone, things like adrenal insufficiency, hyperprolactinemia, those are all disease processes that you'll hear of and they typically are dealing with the anterior pituitary. There is also a posterior part of the pituitary that gives off two hormones. One is oxytocin and oxytocin has to do with contractions. It's the thing that allows women to contract during labor. And then it also gives off antidiuretic hormone or ADH also known as vasopressin. And vasopressin antidiuretic hormone are the hormones or is the hormone that helps to regulate the fluid status in the body. Now diabetes insipidus, which we're talking about today, is different from diabetes mellitus, which has to do with blood sugar. So the word diabetes simply means peeing a lot, right? So excessive peeing. Insipidus has to do with the urine itself. So it is odorless and it is colorless. And so it is called insipid, right? So insipid urine. So peeing, diabetes, a lot of insipid odor, colorless urine is what diabetes insipidus means. Diabetes mellitus, on the other hand, means peeing a lot of sweet, urine or urine full of sugar. That's why that's called mellitus. So that's the distinction between the two. So when we talk about excessive urine, what does that really mean? Now, the average person pees between one to two quarts per day. In diabetes insipidus, it's not uncommon for that person to pee between three and 20 quarts and for them to drink more than a gallon of water per day to quench their thirst. Now the way the body maintains hydration is whatever fluid comes into the body, the body retains what it needs and then allows the excess to either be used in per perspiration, uh, in the feces, or in the urine. And particularly in the urine, that's of interest to us because that's where uh, sometimes diabetes insipidus can come into play. Now, what usually happens is that the fluid in the body is filtered through the kidney and whatever is needed in the body is reabsorbed into the system and the excess goes into the bladder to be stored for urination. If you should decrease the amount of fluid that you drink, the body through the kidney begins to reabsorb more and allow less to go into the urine. Antidiuretic hormone, which is the hormone that I said comes from the posterior pituitary, antidiuretic hormone is the hormone that's used in that process. So if you're not producing enough antidiuretic hormone 
or if the hormone does not affect the kidney in the appropriate way, then more fluid than should be released is put into the bladder as urine, and so we lose that, and so the body becomes dehydrated. To replenish the urine that's lost, the body makes you thirsty, and so you drink more to compensate for what is lost, like we typically do if you go outside on a hot summer day, um, or you're out working, or out running, out playing, you'll find that you begin to get more thirsty, and so the body makes you thirsty so that you can replace the water, the fluid that you are losing. And so you can imagine someone who has diabetes insipidus, if they're losing an excessive amount of fluid, and we said between 3 and 20 quarts per day, they've got to replace that. So they're running to the bathroom to urinate, but at the same time running to the refrigerator to get a cup to drink water. To the bathroom, get a cup. To the bathroom, get a cup. And you can see that that can become very, very problematic uh, in in trying to really kind of maintain a normal life. Well, what causes diabetes insipidus? There are actually four different types of diabetes insipidus. One is called central diabetes insipidus, which is where the posterior pituitary, for some reason, does not produce enough antidiuretic hormone. You can also have nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, which is where the body is producing or the pituitary is producing enough ADH, but the ADH is not being effectively used in the kidneys. And you can have diabetes insipidus in pregnancy, which occurs because the placenta produces an enzyme that breaks down ADH or vasopressin, so the body essentially is lacking ADH. And then finally, you can have dipsogenic diabetes insipidus, which is where someone is drinking an ex excessive amount of water, resulting in frequent urination. The causes of central diabetes insipidus and dipsogenic diabetes insipidus are similar, uh, and those are head trauma, inflammatory conditions, infection, surgery, or a brain tumor. So there are several groups of things that can cause nephrogenic or kidney-related diabetes insipidus. One group would be medication. So things like lithium or some antibiotics can cause diabetes insipidus related to the kidneys. Some electrolyte imbalance, so hypercalcemia or hypokalemia can also cause diabetes insipidus. And then chronic kidney disease or some obstructive kidney disease can also cause nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. So how is diabetes insipidus diagnosed? Well, like most things that we talk about, you've got to have a conversation with your physician. If you suspect that you are having symptoms, then make sure that you talk with your physician. They will do a physical exam. They'll do an assessment in terms of discussing your symptoms. Uh, they'll probably draw some labs uh, to look at the concentration of your sodium and the concentration of your blood. They will also look at the concentration in your urine and also probably get a 24-hour urine to see how much urine you're producing. There's also a water deprivation test that can be done, which is where you deprive someone of water for a period of time, and then you check their blood and their urine uh, to see what the concentrations are and what the sodium levels are. You may also need some imaging done, so typically imaging of the pituitary, and also some genetic testing may be done as well. So how is diabetes insipidus treated? Well, for nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, the treatment comes in the form sometimes of a water pill. It also can involve using a low-sodium diet, and then some anti-inflammatory medications may be given to assist with the disease process. In central and pregnancy-related diabetes insipidus, uh, desmopressin is used. In pregnancy, usually it is a nasal spray that's given, and in central, it can be given either as a nasal spray or as an injection. In mild cases of central diabetes insipidus, simply increasing the intake of water can help. 
For dipsogenic diabetes insipidus, there's really no known cure for it. And so fluid restriction is what is used in the treatment. There are several symptoms of diabetes insipidus. We've mentioned two of the major ones already. Number one, excessive thirst. That's drinking more than a gallon of water per day. Excessive urination, and that's more than 3 to 20 quarts, more than 3 liters uh, per day of urination. Uh, colorless, odorless urine. Dehydration resulting from the excessive urination. Muscle aches and muscle cramps and spasms. And crankiness. Now, with dehydration, there are some other things that can occur as well. So lightheadedness and dizziness. Uh, seizures, uh, elevated sodium levels, and loss of consciousness. And yes, if not treated, diabetes insipidus can lead to death. One out of every 25,000 people will have diabetes insipidus, and many people will have mild cases and mild symptoms of diabetes insipidus. So our challenge for this video is if you are having any of those symptoms, if you're peeing excessively, if you are excessively thirsty or any of the other symptoms that we've described, talk to your physician. Get in, let them know. We want to make sure that you are staying healthy and that you are being proactive with your health. If you are getting some benefit from the videos that we're producing, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Click on the bell so that you'll be alerted when we do other videos. Give us a thumbs up and share this with your family and friends. We are growing a channel that is educational, that is supportive. We thank you for coming and watching this video with us. We'll see you at the next video. This is Dr. Dwayne Wood from Diabetes and Endocrine Wellness Center and The Light Away, educating the public for a better you.